Hello, hello, hello everyone. Sorry about the delay there. We had some technical difficulties while we were playing around with um, some settings for the hello, stream and hello, some other hello, things. Hello, oh, I've got a double talk now. I've got to fix that real quick. Man, I am just all over the place today, huh? Uh, sorry about that, folks. Um, we sh you shouldn't get any more double talk, but if you have any problem with it, um, let me know and I'll restart the stream and that should get rid of it. Um, but I've got it muted now in my window here. Um, so thank you for joining us today. Um, as always, I'm your community manager, Luke, um, and this is the Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. Welcome to the stream for Fantasy Flight Interactive, Thursday, February 1st. Uh, turn up my volume here because I'm getting a little quiet there. Um, yeah, so thank you for joining us, as always. Um, today we are going to be jumping back in with Eowyn and taking a look a little bit more at some other abilities that we have for her. Um, we showed her off a little bit on Tuesday. Um, we showed her off a little bit on Tuesday. Uh, we did not have much success with Inquest 2. Um, I have built a deck with a vengeance now to try to take uh, take Ungoliant spawn down. Um, and we are also using, um, we're going to be using Legolas for that stream as well today too. We are going to have Legolas in that deck, um, which we showed him last week. Um, and we had some success with him. Um, we're going to be jumping into Quest 2 in a moment here. Um, before that, just a little bit of housekeeping. Wanted to talk about some stuff. Um, keep the suggestions coming, guys. We are looking a lot at uh, different aspects of the game that we've been seeing on this stream lately. Um, we've been talking a lot internally about Spirit, kind of its role, how we are going to... Uh, you know, make it work within the um, within the experience. Um, you know, a lot of these quests you're going to be seeing are going to be very combat oriented, so you're going to see some of the other spheres do a little bit better. But we still want to make sure Spirit has its own defined identity um, within the uh, within the core set. So you know, keep those uh, keep those suggestions coming. We are listening to all of those, and we are definitely um, talking about them internally, and uh, we are loving your feedback. Um, so yeah, that is helping quite a bit. Um, other than that, there's not a lot of other housekeeping bits to take care of. Uh, we will have a poll on Friday again to um, look uh, at what hero we are going to be playing on uh, next week's stream. We're going to be choosing between Faramir or Sam Gamgee to see Sam Gamgee, excuse me, to see um, which character is going to be the uh, the hero that we unveil next and build a deck with. Um, the last week it was Aowen who won in kind of in a, a last minute landslide on Monday. Um, we're going to have that same length of time for those same polls again. So Faramir fans come out because uh, Sam Gamgee fans came out uh, came out swinging last week, and uh, we'll see if they do that the same the same for this week. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump back into Quest Two and take a look at this deck that I have put together for today's uh, today's stream. Is not the starter deck; it is <laughs> Revenge on Quest Two, as I have uh, called it. Um, so as you can see, we are kind of employing a similar um, ally focused. Uh, Ally focus build to take advantage of Aowen's ability. Um, this is still going to be using uh, Arwen from the lower sphere, and uh, now we've added tactics instead of leadership to focus a little bit more on bettering our heroes. So you're going to see a couple more attachments. You're going to see the decks a little bit leaner. Um, it doesn't rely on the top of your curve yet, um, and uh, it's going to be able to kind of play in the early game a little bit better and tussle with some of those enemies that. Uh, that Sauron puts out there. I think that our previous build was a little weak to uh, guard, and this deck is going to be a little bit better against guard. Um, the valor, the valor count up in the corner here is actually um, a combination of different things. So uh, these numbers are not going to be final. Um, what I have here is kind of not an accurate sentiment for what you're going to be getting within the game, um, because uh, our accounts are constantly being reset. We're throwing valor in order to unlock certain things. Um, and like everything, everything is subject to change based on the licensors, based on different partners, based on changes that we make. So nothing you see is going to be a final work in progress. Um, so that Valor count is based on a couple of things, based on how I work through quests myself and different Valor that I'm awarded uh, during development. Um, let's jump in real quick. Yeah, two one attack heroes again, Lulzer. That is correct. Um, but this time I think it's going to work a little bit better for us. Um, based on uh, the damage that Legolas is able to put out there and some of the other cool tricks that I've seen with this deck. Um, I've come up with a combo that I'm quite happy with in this first uh, in this first leg of the, this first location in this quest. Um, hopefully we get it so I can show it off a little bit here, but um, we've been moving pretty quickly through these first locations so far. And here it is. So I've been keeping Sylvan Tracker in my opening hand, um, not mulliganing him out. Um, this is a card that you'll see within the Legolas hero pack. Uh, we showed him off a little bit last week, but I've added it to this deck as well. So the the plan with this is that if you Sylvan Tracker, because you only have Eowyn out on the field, 
Um, you give her stealth, whatever enemy has to attack into the tracker in order to finish off, and then you trigger a win, and presumably, if it's not a guard enemy, you get to clear in one move. So I'm going to show that in a second here, but um, we'll keep him, we'll keep the archer, and I think we'll keep a warrior shield, there, I mean a warrior sword, excuse me. The shield of Rohan could be good too, to uh, give our hero stalwart, um, but in this case I think I'm just going to ship it back since we're keeping so much of our hand. Yeah, that's kind of the theory, McDog. If we have the um, the attachments from Tactics, we have a little bit of a better chance in, in theory. Um, I am going to go ahead and take Lorien's Wealth. That's the other thing you need to, in order to make this, this interaction work, you have to take some kind of event. Um, because you need to feint your first attack and get Sauron to attack you back. So um, you're going to be using your favor card in le if you don't draw one of these. And if you don't draw an event to use, you will be using your favor card as your first action. Um, I'm just going to show you guys because it's probably easier than explaining the whole thing. But uh, let's jump back in. Yeah, Lulzar, I um, Pete, we are on me. We are on normal difficulty right now. Um, Lulzar, I've been taking wealth quite a bit. Um, but I think there are situations where you would want to take hidden cash, especially if you have one of those five cost or four cost allies in your hand. Um, so it really just depends on how you build your deck. And I tend to build decks that favor um, favor card draw. So I'm going to keep a one. We'll hit continue. We will jump in. Hummer horns come out and play. Okay, so this will work for what we were trying to accomplish here in this first location. So um, I will play out the tracker. The tracker will give A when stealth. Oh, this actually won't work because uh, Hummer horns are not strong enough to take down Sylvan Tracker in one move, so I won't be able to do this. Um, that's unfortunate. I suppose that we could, if we drop Archer, put the damage on it, then swing it in, then we can definitely do it. Um, in which case, we probably shouldn't have played the uh, the tracker, but that's fine. This is another way that this can work. Either that, or we just play the slow game and take down the take down the Hammerhorns with both of them, putting a Warrior Sword on Eowyn. Then Sauron gets another activation. He plays out whatever enemy he has. He's holding onto one resource. So it could be something big. If it's a, um, if it is that scent, if, if it's that guard spider, then we have a problem. Um, but if it's just, uh, if it's just another enemy, then we'll be able to succeed in, in two turns then. Is there any way we can finish this in one turn? Just with the archer play. Archer's pretty valuable though. Yeah, but we've got card draw and we've got some really good allies. I'm just going to do the archer play, I think. So we place the damage on there. We end our planning phase. We'll attack in with the archer, which will exhaust the Hummerhorns, kill the archer, activate Eowyn, and we clear the objective in one move, and then we travel. So that's what I was trying to get off. If you get a two attack um, enemy, then it can crash into the tracker by default if you only play it, um, and then you're guaranteed to be able to travel with Eowyn in the, uh, in the single move. Um, so that's kind of sort of how her uh, her ability can function the best basically you're trading a card to move forward in one location but basically that's um, that's a pretty good trade I think in terms of value okay rescue your friends this is the one where we can get back our uh, captured heroes again it's a four willpower um, but this time we have to deal with guards and the hive guardian um, Sauron plays a treachery face down. I believe we have a bug in the game right now where this card is not going to go away until we travel. So sorry about that, folks. I don't think it's going to... Yeah, it's going to stay on the screen, unfortunately. That is not the uh, the intention. Normally when you see a, uh, a, tre a treachery card is played face down as a uh, preparation, you'll just see the pip over here on Sauron's, uh, on Sauron's indicator here to see that the card is played. This isn't some sort of indicator that you've got a, uh, a card to trigger or anything like that. Um, that being said, we do have to worry about whatever this prep card is. It could be something that affects us if we play events, um, the storm, which makes us discard cards, or it could be something that exhausts our allies or could potentially trigger on attack here. I'm not sure what to do here. I'm just going to play out the axe hand. The problem with playing the axe hand, if it is that... Um, that treachery card that exhausts our allies, then uh, we've basically spent our entire turn to get an exhausted ally in play. 
but we are pretty far ahead. The other option would be to draw cards and drop warrior shield and then presumably some, do something else with our two resources. Um, I'm, uh, I'm gonna do that, actually. Okay, so we could Woodland Courier out. Have, have we seen the new art on self-preservation yet? I believe I played it on Tuesday's stream, but I really love this new um, art piece here. Um, in any case, we could either play out the Axe Hand now, and then, or we could Warrior Sword and Woodland Courier. Um, but there's no way if we play Woodland Courier for us to clear this Hive Guardian in one turn. Um, that's fine, I think. Yeah, always draw cards first, quad. That is a, that is a valuable lesson. Okay, so it didn't trigger on there, so it's not going to exhaust our ally. We're going to get an activation out of our, uh, our Axe Hand, which is pretty optimal. Um, not really expected, but pretty optimal. Um, let's send him in, because I don't want him to get exhausted by the Hatchling Spider. Um, the other two one damage don't matter as much if they do. Okay, so it's poisoned by Spider, so he's not going to, uh... Our tracker is not going to ready on upkeep because of that card. Let's take a look real quick at this uh, at this prep card here. Next character that it spider damages but does not defeat is exhausted until after its upkeep. This is also a new art piece. We just recently put this in um, in place of a different one. Um, but yeah, so this card is going to make it so that we are not going to be able to uh, we are not going to be able to ready up our Sylvan tracker next uh, next round. But that's fine because I think we'll be able to basically clear off the spider with just. Uh, with just the axe hand. If that's the case, then we probably shouldn't attack in with Eowyn. Um, the Hive Guardian's gonna get plus one every time it defends right now. Um, so there's no reason to increase its attack and tr end up trading with the axe hand. Instead, we'll just end our adventuring phase. Draw self-preservation, go into upkeep, go into planning. Okay, this was kind of the card I was the most worried about. I mean, we're still at 29 threats, so we have some time to deal with these, uh, with these different enemies that Sauron plays out, but a 2-8 is really, really hard for us to get through, especially with these, uh, with these allies we've got on the board now. So I am going to put a Warrior Sword on Aowen. I'm going to close the history here, even though it can be, uh, useful. Kind of, when I have it out, it kind of distracts my eye when I'm, uh, while I'm playing here. Yeah, Bombadilling is actually a really good... <laughs> can we turn Bombadilling into a verb for, um, killing when it enters, uh, into play? I think that that's a... That is a good idea. Um, Bombadilling this 2-8 uh, this is probably the correct play, so we want to save one resource. Um, if that's the case, we can feint one of these enemies. I think I'm going to do that. Um, just to get m maximum use of my resources here. And we'll end our planning. Uh, in that case, I will send in the... Well, if I send in here... No, that's fine. Yeah. Sylvan Tracker goes down... Um, I'm okay with trading two for two here. Oh, there's no real reason to, though, because Tom just kills it no matter what. Interesting, yeah, so that was a bad trade, but I wasn't really thinking about it at the time. Um, let us Bombadil. Oof, another guard. I mean, four toughness isn't that much to chew through, especially, I mean, that's two activations, but... Still annoying. We're spending a little bit more time on this location than I'd like to. Um, which will affect our final score, but I don't think we're in a hole or anything like that. You've been bombadilled. Take that guy down. We are at zero resources, so we'll end our planning phase. Um, I want to maximize our value from Tom, too, but unfortunately there's no real good math here. We're always going to be doing five, so... Okay. So Sauron decides to pass his attacks. In that case, I will put the two damage on Tom since he's got fleeting anyway. He's going to be leaving us at the end of the round. Um, and I'll take down this hatchling spider. Yeah, that's fine. Our plan is going to be um, to attack with, uh, to quest with Eowyn and finish it in one activation anyway. So there's no real reason to get incremental advantage on there. Um, one of the things is that, uh, that I actually was not aware of that... Um, I've recently noticed is that if Sauron passes his attack, um, he's going to be passing all future attacks in that round, um, which wasn't the way I was playing before. I thought that he could pass one and then decide to attack later, but he actually passes his future actions. He, he's basically hitting his end phase button when he decides to pass attacks. Um, so that kind of gives us a little bit more flexibility in what we're trying to do here. Kind of an interesting dimension to the game. We're in upkeep. 
planning. Hunted. We will either gain one threat for each ally or discard an ally. I am going to... Actually, I wonder if I discard it, I wonder if Eowyn's trigger goes off, because I wonder if that counts as defeated, or if it just counts as leaving play. There's only real one way to find out, so let's find out for a second. No, it unfortunately doesn't. Yeah, Penguins, um, that is actually a mechanic that I've seen in a lot of different uh, FFG titles. Um, so I shouldn't have been surprised by it, but I wasn't really thinking of it in those terms. But yeah, passing future actions is something that you'll see a lot in Fantasy Flight titles. Um, in that way. Um, I'm gonna Archer here just to make sure that neither of my characters get exhausted so we can leave on this, uh, on this turn. I think it's just, I think it's just correct. Like I said though, these, uh, excuse me, these Archer activations are really powerful. These, uh, um, her arrival effects is really powerful. I like to save them, especially in this quest, I like to save them for the last location um, because you have so many guards to fight through, but in this case, I think it's just worth racing through here. And now we've got arranged on the board, so that'll be useful. Um, and we get our heroes back. 33 threats, so not terrible, and we, uh, we can travel. And this card will finally leave. They spin giant webs from tree to tree, trapping you in their den. You will have to cut your way through. Okay, here we are. Escape the spiders. So this one's kind of a beefy objective here. We have to get through eight uh, willpower. A 34 threat, that's not that bad, but it's still quite a bit. Um, fortunately, Arwen has some friends helping her finally. Uh, we will deal one to the spiders here since they're our only target. And Black Forest Bats come into play. Caught in a web, so we are going to lose one of our allies here. Okay, that's fine. Um, yep, we are not able to quest on this objective until we clear out our guards. Remember that, because uh, when there's objectives in my, in my home row instead of the staging, a lot of the times I can miss that, but uh, that is important to note. Put a shield up on uh, up on Legolas, and we will end our planning phase. So normally I wouldn't send an Arwen here. Like I probably should have put the shield on Arwen um, because I'm going to try to use the ranged ability to uh, deal the last two to spiders. Um, but the stalwart can help, so I think it makes sense putting it on Legolas. Yeah, um, Penguin's the shield background, um, oh, versus the red highlighting. Yeah, um, I'm actually not sure what the red highlighting is illustrating here. Like I said, we've had some weird, um, some weird highlighting bugs, um, going on. Um, but we're still playing around with the visual effect for guard, making sure it's more distinct. So you might see a change coming to that, uh, in the near future. Um, just because we've gotten some feedback from some people on it. So that might be different in the future. So I think they might just be playing around with different effects here. Good eye, though. Good catch. Um, I could just save the archer. Let's do that. Yep, it was confirmed. It's a, it is a glow bug. Um, glow bug, if you will. Um, that's why those uh, those guard enemies are uh, are glowing. Heal up Arwen here. Greedy Fingers is going to get rid of our one of our attachments, so we lose the shield off of Legolas. That's unfortunate. Um, like I said, that stalwart could have been very useful. Self-preservation. Um, we will put it on... I have Starbrooch in this deck, which is another special attachment, so I don't want to put it on a character that I plan on activating twice. So I'm actually going to put it on a one. Um, just because then I'd have to replace that, uh, that attachment. Might have been worth the playing, um, caregiver there to make sure that we could clear this objective in this quest, but, um, excuse me, we could clear this objective within this, uh, this turn. But I think this is fine. Um, there's not a lot of pressure on us. We're still at 35 and we only have one location left. Um, and I'd rather save the caregiver for a scenario when one of our heroes is pretty low on health. 
uh, which will probably happen in the boss next turn. Heal up. Yeah, now we have resources for Bjorn, for Bjorn or uh, Gandalf, which we just drew, Chris. That is a good point. Yeah, sometimes you will want to stick around for a while in order to... Uh, if you can afford it with the threat, sometimes it makes sense to stick around, get your activations off Arwen, draw your card, get your resources before you move into the next location. Um, the big problem with that is that, obviously, Sauron can pull something out of his deck that you weren't expecting and kind of... Uh, Pretty wrench in your plans. So like here he only played two spiders and like I do not want to fight these at all so it's great that I can travel immediately. Um, but had one of them be that 3-4 I would have probably that one turn that I stuck around would have probably turned into two turns of fighting and it just wouldn't have been worth it. Um, so you have to be making those decisions when you're playing the game for sure. Alex I'm reading your question right here about the uh, the art for Eowyn. Um, I could not speak to why those pieces were determined for uh, where they are, um, but I will say that, like, in terms of uh, different iterations of characters, um, that is something we're thinking about doing in the future, too. Um, but yeah, thematically, like, this version of the spirit, uh, this version of the spirit Eowyn is a little bit more combat focused because it cares about when allies are slain, so I think that, personally, I think the art is appropriate, but I definitely hear you. Um, see, Stan, I have never seen Sauron run out of cards myself. Um, I don't believe he can. You hack through the spider's webs, but advance only a short distance when an enormous spider appears, blocking your escape. Alright, here we are. So, um, last time we kind of fought our way through here, <laughs> um, things looked grim basically the entire, uh, the entire adventure. Things have gotten a little bit better now. Um, we are in a pretty good location. Uh, I mean, we are in a pretty good spot for this location. Um, and I'm ready to take down Ungoliant Spawn. Um, so this is kind of displays how when you build your deck a little bit more oriented for the quest rather than going into the quest just with the deck that you happen to have, um, you can do a lot better. You need to build for your scenarios rather than building for um, your... Uh, rather than building for the task at hand. Someone's telling me right now that, uh, yeah, so Sauron is, if he would theoretically run out of cards, he reshuffles and draws again when he's out um, because he has access to resources that you don't have, um, him being the Dark Lord and all. Um, all that being said, we are ready to take on Angolian spawn now. Yeah, I see V even engaged. You're both correct in there too. Um, Lozer, that is not correct. There will be different versions of unique characters uh, in the game. Um, there are not right now, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean there won't be in the future. Um, I can't say that there will definitively, but I can't say that there won't be definitively either, basically. Um, yeah, Penguins, I also really like this. Uh, this board's kind of more alive because there's these uh, the spiders crawling around and things like that. We're playing around with that for different locations. One of the cool things is that every location in this game has its own unique game board. Um, so what we do with these, uh, with those different locations at different art direction is, uh, it's pretty neat, and we have a lot of fun putting those together. Um, I'm just gonna put the one damage on Angolian spawn. Another treachery card, this one's gonna stay around in perpetuity again. Um, hmm. Do I just send Gandalf in? I don't know. It's either that or I play Bjorn. Yeah, I'm gonna play Bjorn um, because we have multiple enemies to finish off here too. And we'll play out the Axe Hand. <laughs> I see Chad is already yelling at me that I should have played Gandalf. Um, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna have enough resources to play him in the future. Um, so getting Bjorn out and getting incremental advantage made more sense to me right now. Um, if I would have put the three damage, I could have gone three damage here, cleared it out with another ally with two attacks. That would have been fine too. For now, I think this is all right. We wouldn't have been able to take out spawn this turn. Yeah, um, Gloomy, you're correct because 
they are both uh, they are both guard. Hatchling Spider doesn't normally have guard. Um, Ungoliant Spawn gives it guard and uh, plus one attack when it comes in, and every upkeep there's going to be a new one in play. So the challenge here in this location basically is dealing with all of these different guard enemies um, and then still being able to pile the damage on Ungoliant Spawn. And one of the best ways to do that is um, dealing damage and then uh, dealing direct damage with both Legolas, Gandalf, and uh, the Archers and some other characters like that. Um, all that being said, let's start doing some attacks here. Alright, Legolas is going to do range damage, so he's not going to receive anything back. Um, I'm fine with sending in the Axe Hand here. I don't know if we really need to... Well, if I do this, then we can pick him off with Legolas, and then we can just... Uh, all we have to deal with is the two... The Hatchling Spider, and then we can take out Ungolian Spawn, so let's do that. Sauron still has one resource, and then there's still this preparation card. Um, I'm not sure what we've played since we last dropped it on the... F since he dropped it on the field... We've played allies, we haven't played events, so it could affect events. Um, it could also be something that if character... No, because we were dealt damage. So it's probably an event that has to do with playing out uh, playing out event cards, I'm guessing. So there's the Hatchling Spider on upkeep. Sauron still at his four resources. I th assume we're going to get another enemy on the board here. Um, we could heal up Bjorn, or we can just heal up... Uh, we'll heal up Arwen. Yeah, Lulz are actually in the first... Uh, in the first quest, there is a... Uh, a objective along with the boss that if you clear it, it's about six willpower, I believe, and if you clear it, your allies all heal for four. Um, so we are experimenting with stuff like that too, for sure. Um, I am going to save my resources. Um, I could, if I spend two, then I'll go down to one. I will only have four on the next turn. I'm going to save them so that I can get off. If I had a one cost thing, I could play it, but I don't, so... Awen comes in there, trades with Bjorn, but that'll be enough now to take down the spawn, um, even if both of our characters... Okay, so it was poisoned by spiders. And we can finish him off with Legolas, all our heroes are alive, and we complete the quest. And we complete the quest. There it is. Alright, so that worked a little bit better than, uh, than Tuesday's stream, I would say myself. Um, Let's jump into the deck builder, take a look at the deck and uh, how we've built it, uh, and what our plan is for the uh, for future iterations of it. I was pretty happy with how it did there. Um, yeah, that was that was a pretty good performance from it. Um, that's kind of a good way to be able to take down taunts and then use Aowen as a uh, as a tank for your objective. Um, so that was a fairly successful list. Let's take a quick look at it. Thanks everybody in the chat who's uh, congratulating me after my. Uh, my handy and uh, disheartening defeat on Tuesday. That was uh, that was rough. Um, yeah, let's take a look at it real quick. So a 27 starting threat, pretty low, um, pretty low number because we are all uh, we're all nines here for our threat level. Um, the uh, the trade off there, of course, is the one one attack on two of our heroes here. Uh, the idea is that Legolas mitigates that because he's essentially three damage. Um, and most of the time it is uh, without taking anything back himself because of the range and his ability. Um, but uh, let's just take a look here. Um, I do not have any new cards to show off on today's stream. On Thursday we will be showing off, I mean, excuse me, on Tuesday we will be showing off uh, whatever pack wins and we're going to be taking a look at that. Um, and perhaps some Valor cards as well, um, if everything works out in order. So we're going to be able to take a look at some uh, new cards then right now. Um, Penguins, that, uh, that Palantir reward there um, is not accurate. That, uh, those numbers are still being um, adjusted for uh, what you're going to be getting back based on how you clear the quests. Um, so the, that final tally screen is uh, definitely a work in progress. So I don't know if I would... Uh, I wouldn't go off of it for what kind of rewards you're going to be seeing um, after you finish a quest with those characters. 
Um, it's not quite accurate yet. Um, Lulzar, I'm going to read your comment right now. Um, it's a little long, so if you'll excuse me. Yeah, overquest. That's interesting. So, um, if you reach something before trap, there's like a, th it's basically a, a quest threshold. If you can reach past the threshold, you get a certain bonus in addition to, uh, to traveling. So, like, maybe draw a card or, like, gain resources or something. That's definitely interesting. Um, just finding new uses for willpower is something, something cool that we can think about. Um, okay, so, as I was saying with this deck, sorry, I lost my train of thought there while I was thinking about that. Um, we got some card draw, we have some allies. Um, I was playing two Gonberries before, um, but I find that with his unique um, being such a low, uh, a low cost as he is, um, he's not exactly what we're looking for. Um, having one copy is a little bit more powerful. Um, let's see what else we've got. We've got the Caregiver in here, the Tracker. I'm happy with all of these things. Uh, didn't see Houses of Healing. Didn't really need it either. I'm not sure we really even need to play the two. Um, Tom was good, so was Gandalf, and those are sticking at one copy. Makes more sense to me, too. Um, Took didn't come into play. Favor of the Lady I don't think is necessary because we have enough ways to get um, to get willpower. I would really like to play Bow, um, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to play Bow. I mean, we can't play Bow because it's a level 2 tactics. I wish we could. Um, it's kind of exactly what we're looking for in the deck. Um, I'm going to cut the Favor of the Lady, though, if it'll let me will allow me to uh, edit my decks today. I'm not sure it will. That's unfortunate. I was hoping we could talk a little bit about that. Um, well, that's something to think about for future notes, I suppose. Um, yeah, Gon, I, th I think... Uh, excuse me, Lilzer. I think Gon is pretty powerful where he's at right now, um, but maybe increasing his base would, would make sense. Um, I have seen him be a powerhouse in certain locations, especially in Quest 3, where you're going to be seeing a lot of different uh, objectives. He's been really powerful. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's certain times where he's just a, basically a one willpower, which isn't, uh, which isn't huge. I really would like to get sterner than steel working in a deck too, because I think it's so cool. Um, but it, again, being level two spirit, you would have to build with A1 and Frodo and then a, a third hero. I'm not sure what that deck would look like. Um, but that'd be something interesting for sure to start putting together. Um... Woodland Courier, I think I've got one copy as well. So I'd like to replace this Favor of the Lady and put in another Woodland Courier, just because even having zero zero attack allies is pretty powerful. Um, because it's... Uh, oh, I was able to drag it out, it looks like. And drop it. Okay, so it looks like we have a drag and drop feature for uh, deck building put in here, but uh, we're going to need to increase the visual indication that that's what we're doing. Um, but So yeah, that is a way to edit the deck right now. So just drag and drop instead of double clicking. Um... So, uh, let's see what we've got here. Quad, I see your comment. Um, so, yeah, that is a, uh, that is a huge point for sure. Um, as development has increased with the game, um, what information we've been able to show... Uh, has also changed, um, and uh, what we feel comfortable sharing. Uh, the purposes of this stream and the reason why you get so much information on this stream basically is that we are able to show the game as a work in progress on these streams. Um, we are able to kind of talk about this in a context of like this is something that is going to change. These are things that we are going to uh, continue to work on. Um, that context exists here. When we make official announcements, it's not quite that open. Um, so... As we are releasing new content, we are making sure that it's all final decisions uh, when we are posting them at, uh, out as official messages. Basically, here we can be a little more open with our uh, a little bit more open, a little bit more candid. It can be more of a conversation. Um, so that's basically the the reason why a lot of this information comes in these streams um, and why it's going to why it's been different in different places as well too. Uh, that's kind of just our approach for now. Um, the one thing I can say to you is that uh, these streams, which we were previously archiving on Twitch. Um, we are now able to uh, to update them onto YouTube. So that is something that we are going to be able to start doing is archiving the streams on, on YouTube for, uh, for posterity. I know a lot of people have been asking about that. Um, obviously, that's also a work in progress. Like, you know, when it comes to making these videos and putting them up and uh, doing these streams, like I'm the person doing that. Um, so that's something that I have to uh, I have to be able to put together as well. Um, but you'll be able to take a look at these things on the YouTube channel. Um, being able to spark conversations through Steam and uh, through uh, through
through these Twitch streams, um, through those different channels is also something that we find incredibly valuable. Um, and uh, we hope that that candor, you can appreciate that candor as well as we continue to do these things. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really what I can share with you about all that right now. Um, as we get closer to launch, um, once, you know, designs start getting finalized, uh, we can reveal a whole lot more. Um, so I know <laughs> you guys have been hearing this a lot, but, um, you know, there's more info to come in the future. Um, very soon, very soon. Um, and a lot more information on, uh, how we plan to expand this game beyond just what we have to show. Um, doing these weekly streams, you know, this is kind of not really a typical thing for development or anything. Um, it isn't as much an experiment as a lot of the things that we were doing here at FFI. Um, you know, we're a new studio and we definitely want to, uh, we definitely want to keep on, uh, talking about it and, uh, collaborating with you guys to make this game as, as good as it can once we, uh, launch it. Um, Gloomy, I'm going to take a look at your note here. Yeah. Uh, well, we're just putting, you know, different art pieces that we have, uh, that we have built into the game. Um, yeah. Thank you, Pete. Uh, we appreciate the time with you guys too. Uh, I know it's a highlight of my job being able to uh, hang out and talk to you guys and uh, get that feedback and uh, bring it back to the devs. Um, that is definitely a highlight for me, and I hope that you guys are able to enjoy that too. Um, you know, it's a pretty big cornerstone of what we're doing here at FFI. Um, yeah, Quad. I could we could potentially put some kind of uh, content together. Um, if there's content outside of these streams that you want to see, um. I can't promise that anything will happen, but um, if you give me some idea of the kind of things that you would like to see outside, um, you know, maybe Steam, or if you message me uh, our page on Facebook, or um, you message us, yeah, me messaging us through Facebook is probably the best way to do it. Um, if there are things that you would like to see outside of development streams, um, let me know, and I can see what I can do. Um, that's about as best of a promise as I can give for you guys. Um, so, yeah. Uh, penguins, yeah, so the core set's going to, so early access, there's going to be the five, uh, the five within the first quest, um, the first campaign, excuse me, five quests within the first campaign. Um, there's going to be at full release, we are going to have the second campaign. We hope to have that available too at full release. Um, so that's just for early access with the first one. Um, in terms of other things that we are planning to do for the streams as well, um, we would like to at some point do something a little bit more on the road. Um, and I don't really want to share details on that yet, um, but uh, hopefully you'll be hearing more about that in the future as we continue to uh, to develop what, what kind of uh, community content we'll be able to do. Um, you know, announcing this game has been a whirlwind. Um, now that things have kind of slowed down a little bit, we're able to expand it a little bit more and show some more stuff. Uh, so as always, guys, thank you for joining us today. Um, I am Luke. You can follow us on Facebook.com slash FFI Games, Twitter.com slash uh, FFI under, at FFI underscore games. Excuse me, I was reading while I was thinking. Um, we are going to be able to stream here on Twitch.tv slash FFI Games, and you can find us on YouTube at, as well at Fantasy Flight Interactive. Um, so follow us on those socials, interact with us, meet us on the Steam community where we can talk a little bit more about uh, things that you're seeing in the game, how the game is developing, what you think, feedback, things like that. Um, you can connect with other users on Reddit. There is a Reddit page for our game as well. Um, you can go ahead and communicate with people there, um, get in touch with other members of the community, um, and meet some other people who are interested in playing the game, maybe people who play the tabletop or uh, people who haven't in the past or uh, you know, first-time gamers even. Uh, we're going to see a lot of people like this. Um, so thank you so much for joining us here, guys. Uh, thank you uh, for your continuous feedback, and thank you for um, playing with us today, and thank you for uh, your patience as we got this stream working today a little bit too. Um, so we will see you on Tuesday. Uh, we'll put that poll up on Friday as well uh, so we can talk a little bit about some of the other, uh, which hero we can uh, we can show on Tuesday's stream, um, and then go from there. So yeah, thank you, and uh, have a good weekend.